Kyle Larson plays all his cards right to beat Tyler Riddick in a fierce battle at the end of the race. Let's talk about NASCAR in Las Vegas. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR in Las Vegas where Kyle Larson is able to hold off a charging Tyler Riddick in the closing laps to score his third Las Vegas win and guarantee his spot into the NASCAR playoffs for 2024. We had a few drivers that were expected to have good days that had disappointing days based off of where they run. We'll obviously break that down as well. We'll go through the top 10. We'll go through my top three driver picks. Let's go ahead and get into NASCAR's third race of the season, NASCAR in Las Vegas. And obviously, the main storyline is going to be the driver of the number five, HendrickCars.com Chevrolet. That is Kyle Larson. Absolutely dominated, dominated today from start to finish. He unloaded in practice, run very well lap times. They were looking at in practice at like, like fastest 15 lap average time, and he was absolutely blowing them out the water, him and William Byron. And it just looked like Kyle Larson was really fast. He was the favorite going into today based off of practice and qualifying. And, of course, he was able to go out there and essentially dominate the race. There were a few guys that tried to give him a run for his money. Kyle Busch, Tyler Riddick tried to catch him at the end. Denny Hamlin sort of held out there for a while, but really it was Kyle Larson's day from start to finish, which is somewhat similar to a few previous Las Vegas races. You can go back to a few uh, the race last year in the fall. Kyle Larson was able to get the win uh, last fall as well in 2023, and then his first Las Vegas win came in 2021 in the spring as well. So Kyle Larson, obviously very well at these cookie cutter style racetracks, able to get his third Las Vegas win today. And it's always big to win early in the season as well. So huge day for Kyle Larson from that aspect. Another big thing about Kyle Larson is he got a lot of points today. Stage points are very important for every single driver. We see how it comes down to just a few points every season. And Kyle Larson, well, he's going to get seven playoff bonus points, which carries to each round of the playoffs. So he just got 17 of those guaranteed for the rest of the season. And he also got 60 points regular season points today. That is huge. You got the max amount of points you can get is 60, and he got 60. Won, won both the stages and won the race. That's a very impressive run by Kyle Larson, and that him and Cliff Daniels are going to be very excited moving forward, and really just an all-out domination today from, from Kyle Larson uh, once again. Uh, I'll go through my big three drivers real quick, because obviously Kyle Larson's going to be on this list, right? My biggest you know, big three drivers of the race, big three cars of the race or so. I also have Tyler Riddick up here because Tyler Riddick was really fast at times. He was the only driver that kind of gave Larson a run for his money, but Larson was just so good at manipulating the air. You can go back. I mean, you can look at the finish. Kyle Kyle Larson just closed the door on, on Riddick so many times and just, just was able to cut him off put him in the dirty air, and it was really tough for Riddick to even try to make a move very well on Tyler Riddick. So that was certainly interesting to watch and fun to watch in the closing laps. You were hoping Riddick would get there and make an exciting finish if you're not a Larson fan you thought that. Uh, but unfortunately, Riddick just could never quite get up there. He got really close. on. The, he got right to his back bumper with two laps to go, but just with the way the air works at this racetrack, just wasn't quite able to make a pass or, or, or make a move on him. Uh, at, at this particular racetrack. So Tyler Riddick, obviously, would, I would say he's the second fastest car of the race, finished second today. Pit road problems for Tyler Riddick was a problem. You heard, you heard Tyler Riddick uh, express his displeasure with his pit crew uh, today uh, uh, after the race in his post-race interview. That is very frustrating because track position nowadays in NASCAR is probably more important than ever, right? I mean, it's it's very important where your your track position is in NASCAR now compared to where it used to be, you know, three or four or five years ago. So it's very important to not be giving up positions on pit road like Tyler Reddick's team did uh, and that whole 2311 team did. And this has been a point of conversation for 2311 for quite some time. Tyler Riddick has pit road problems. Bubba Wallace had a pit road problem with a lug nut wouldn't come off, completely ruined his day. He was multiple laps down because of that. He was completely out of the race with a clean race car and a clean fast race car at that, but he was completely out of the race because of pit road problems. That's very frustrating. And 2311 Racing, they're going to have to clean that up. If they want to become a championship caliber team, a team that wins multiple races a year per driver, they're going to have to clean the pit road stuff up. And I can carry that over into my third driver that's on the best uh, best cars list, my top three drivers of the race, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch was really fast all day long. He started out mid-pack, started in the 21st position, was able to come up, uh, use some strategy very early in the race after the first caution and get into the top five and run top five for majority of the Day, led a few laps. He was really the only driver that consistently led over Kyle Larson for a solid period of time. Then he went back to second. Then he had a problem on pit road. Something with the lug nut wouldn't come off in time. They had to make sure it was locked. Okay, sure. 
you know that that happens. Uh, that cost him a lot of positions, cost him the stage points, uh, which was disappointing, and put him back in the field. And, and then, of course, got the pit road penalty pinning outside of the box. Uh, it's, it's very frustrating for Kyle Busch because you have a fast race car. It's sort of the Bubba Wallace situation. But Kyle Busch, this has also been a point of conversation for Kyle Busch's team for quite some time is pit road in issues. You go back to the Daytona 500, Kyle Busch is leading top two. You know how Daytona is. He was top two, had a good shot to win the 500. Unfortunately, pit road kept putting him back in the pack. Bigger risk of getting involved in an accident that's very costly for Kyle Busch you can go back to Daytona you go to Atlanta last week what was it a pit road speeding penalty last week Kyle Busch had to come back from going a lap down last week Kyle Busch goes a lap down in this race because of a pit road penalty because he pulled up a little farther in the box but the crew chief and the pit crew is not supposed to touch that car or service that car if it's outside the box. So that's sort of everybody's fault, right? I mean, that's Kyle Busch's fault because he's lifted the pit box, but he can't see. He doesn't know how close it is. That's the team's fault to tell him to back up because you don't want to get the penalty because that's way worse than losing a second back in the car up. So just very frustrating that this is a weekly occurrence for Kyle Busch. Always trying to dig yourself out of a hole is very costly. It costs you stage points and it costs you better finishes. Kyle Busch gave up, what, 30 points today on, on pit road alone and he'd finish 26. He would have finished probably top five, at least top 10 with the speed he had. And he gave up nine stage points in stage two because of, well, pit road issues. So that's a lot of points completely given away. When you have fast race cars and you have good days, you have to take advantage of those points. If you don't do that, you know, next week he might not be as fast. Next week he might be 15th. You, I mean, you don't know. And, the, and you're not going to have those points to lose. So so it's very frustrating uh, to, to watch Kyle Busch do that. But those are my top three cars of the race. Those were definitely the fastest three cars of the race. I wish we could have saw a little bit more of Kyle Busch, but we knew Reddick was really fast. And, of course, Kyle Larson absolutely dominated the race, leading the most laps, won the stages, won the race. Uh, so very impressive run by Kyle Larson. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top ten here real quick because um, I do have uh, – so you do see Kyle Larson is obviously the leader. Tyler Reddick finishing the second position. Already talked about those. You have Ryan Blaney that finished in the third position. So a solid run for Ryan Blaney there. Ross Chastain, a solid day coming back from a pit road penalty as well. Went a lap down, was able to get the lap back, and come all the way up to finish in the fourth position, using a little bit of strategy there, trying to find a way to get a better finishing position, and it worked. Ross Chastain, a solid fourth place run. Ty Gibbs, sophomore season, trying to have a better year than he did last year, finishes in the top five. The 54 Toyota finishes top five today. That's a solid run for Ty Gibbs. You know, this is the type of racetrack we look at, at where you can perform well at. The first two weeks, they're important now, probably a little more important than they have been in previous years, but the, the mile and a half cookie cutter intermediate style tracks is really where you start looking at where these drivers are going to run all year. So Ty Gibbs in the 54 car finishing top five once again at one of these types of racetracks is definitely uh, a boost in the right direction for that team. And, and I would not be surprised at all. I, I'm expecting Ty Gibbs to get over that hump and win a race real soon. I think it's coming sooner than later. Uh, it, it might be this year, it might be next year, but T Ty Gibbs getting closer and closer to getting over that hump of you know top five, top three to getting that victory. So we'll have to see when that comes. Noah Graxson, really solid day for Noah Graxson. Kind of shocked me there. I mean, uh, SHR Fords were not fast all day long. I didn't see Josh Berry. I didn't see Ryan Priest. I didn't see anybody else at the SHR camp except Noah Graxson. He started in the back, didn't look like he had a lot of speed, uh, continued to progress, get farther up, made no mistakes today, minimum mistakes, was able to get him in the top 10 and ultimately a sixth place finish. That's not bad. That's not bad for the sophomore driver who well missed missed half of last season, but able to finish his, in the sixth position today. Very solid run there for, for Noah Grax in, in, in the number 10 forward. So we'll see if that continues. We'll see if he can go to Phoenix next week and have a solid run as well. So that should be a lot of fun to watch. We'll see if that moves over uh, in, into some other weeks because this shouldn't be a fluke, right? I mean, SHR is a really good team that's putting a lot of money, a lot of effort, has some super smart, intelligent engineers at the race shop. Sixth place should not be that impressive, but I'm hoping this moves forward. I'm hoping we can continue uh, to see SHR improve. You know, you see other teams that are starting to run better, like like uh, uh, Michael McDowell, uh, uh, Corey LaJoy, uh, even Carson Hosevar, Spire Motorsports drivers. In that case, you have to see other teams start to fall a little bit, and I'm wondering if that's going to be SHR. Martin Trex Jr. finishes in the seventh position. Solid day for Martin Trex. He was in the top three at times, but just, just a decent day for Martin Trex Jr. finishing in the seventh position. Denny Hamlin. I expected a little more out of Hamlin today. Thought he would have went up there, uh, you know, battled for the win some, but but unfortunately just didn't have a whole lot of speed. Used a bit of strategy, actually. You get up to the eighth position, your pole sitter, Joey Logano, ends up finishing in the top ten. He actually started on, uh, on pole today, started first, fell way back. I want to say he went back like 
15th. It looked like things were really rough for Joey Logano. was not having a good handling car. He said it was plowing on the radio, which is never good. But fortunately for him, he was able to find some adjustments and get a solid top 10 finish for Joey Logano. But still looking for that speed. Once again, Logano has not won since Atlanta in the spring of last year. So Logano is on a bit of a winless streak when you're talking about a two-time champion. It'll be interesting to see if Logano can get over that hump as well to get back to winning, get back into victory lane. He's fast in Daytona, fast in Atlanta, got caught up in wrecks. Wasn't that fast today. Wasn't wasn't the top car. Definitely wasn't a winning race car today uh, at all. William Byron was really fast all day as well, or all weekend in practice. It looked like he was going to be kind of that guy that maybe could battle with Kyle Larson, but just the way things played out, he had a trash bag fly on the, on the front of the car. Obviously, that caused overheating issues because it covers the grill. William Byron has to come down pit road, goes a lap down. He's able to get his lap back, but man, the dirty air was really hard to pass today. It was really hard to get through the field today, and you saw that throughout the field. So William Byron, it just took him so long to get back up to the field. I don't know if the car uh, just wasn't quite as fast as we were expecting, but he could just not get up there like I thought he would. I thought he was going to be able to come back up and, you know, maybe be second or be third or battle Kyle Larson for the win. That's what I was expecting out of the 24 team, looking at practice, looking at the last couple of years uh, at this racetrack. He's the defending spring winner at Las Vegas. So I was a bit disappointed in William Byron that he just didn't really have the speed that I was expecting to see uh, out of the race car today after that issue. It's just like he could never recover uh, from, from that issue where, where he had to come down pit road and get the and get the trash bag off the grill, which is a really unfortunate problem to have, but that's how it goes sometimes in racing. So uh, that's the top five. We had a few drivers that had really bad days. Obviously, Christopher Bell had a flat tire earlier on in the race and then spun later in the race. I believe it was stage two, spun around. So an unfortunate day for Christopher Bell, who was close to winning here uh, last fall, if you remember that, was in a, a pretty tight battle with Kyle Larson. But Christopher Bell, unfortunate day for him. And then Chris Busher, big trouble for Chris Busher, RFK Racing. Wheel comes off. You can see the lug nut fly off and then the wheel immediately after. He slams the wall. He finishes dead last with no stage points. So he's going to get one point on the entire weekend and a member of his crew is going to be suspended for two weeks. Very, very frustrating situation there. Um, uh, for, for, for the 17 team because that's it's going to be a big penalty early on in the season like that. You don't want to have these issues that kill your momentum. So very unfortunate there for the, for the 17 team. We'll see how they can recover moving forward. So we do go to Phoenix next week. Phoenix is going to be a little bit interesting because we do have a new short track package. I'll try not to get into much of it, but the diffuser is a little bit smaller from what I'm understanding, trying to reduce the dirty air a little bit so you can bump and, and maybe pass a little easier at the short tracks. So it should be fun to watch next week in Phoenix. We'll break all that down. Obviously, I'll do a dirty air episode next week. I hope you guys tune in for that. And of course, like and subscribe if you like the video. Please share the video. I do appreciate it a lot. And of course, about Kyle Busch finishing in the in the 26th position. Let's get rowdy.